Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a watch that launched in 2005 and won that year's GPHG Men's Watch Prize. Back at a period when FP Journe was winning everything every year at the GPHG, this won an award at the Oscars of watchmaking. It is the now discontinued 38 millimeter version of the Chronomet Souverain in platinum. So this platinum CS, 38 millimeters in diameter, a case size discontinued after 2015. We have an 8.7 millimeter thickness and from lug tip to lug tip, it is 44.2 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing in between the lugs. Now throwing the watch on my wrist, you could see that it fits beautifully. It's short across the wrist and down the barrel, you'll appreciate that the lugs come nowhere near the edge of my wrist, meaning a much smaller wrist could wear this watch. Even from over the top, which always exaggerates the width of the watch across the wrist, you can see that the lugs are not over the edge of my wrist. So I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. It's definitely a unisex option for him or for her. Here we have large rectangular scale alligator leather, blue matte finish, large rectangular symmetrical scale, which is what we have here is always indicative of the highest quality of alligator hide. You can see that in order to allow the lugs to be drilled close to the case, a curved spring bar is used. That also helps to close the gap and show less daylight between strap and case. So both ergonomic and aesthetic purposes to that curved spring bar there. On the bottom, small round scale alligator. This is what you see on a lot of the best brands today. By using gator on the bottom as well as the top, the strap is made a few hundred dollars more expensive, but also a few years longer wearing, and thus a longer wearing strap, definitely worthwhile on watch this special. We have a simple platinum pin buckle. You can see featuring a combination of media blast and polish. Rolling around to the case, this is a well-established form. The same case used on most FP Journe dress watches since the original 1999 Tourbillon Remontoir. All polished, the flange of the case back in the bezel to find the mid case. We have lugs that downturn fairly sharply, almost 90 degrees from the horizontal of the case band for ergonomic reasons, and they come to a tapered point. We have the well-known Journe double dimple knurled crown profile and unbranded in vintage fashion on the dial. The dial is made of stamped brass, galvanized silver. We have radially arrayed Arabic numerals, which wax and wane in size as necessary to fit around the features of the dial. We have a little sunken track for a bob counterweighted lancet seconds hand. We have these lovely biomorphic distinctive Jorn hands that you could see, tracing a larger railroad scale outboard for reading your minutes than inboard reading your hours. We have a marine chronometer style power reserve, so you can see 56, that's the maximum power reserve. And I say this is marine chronometer style because it moves backward as you wind it. On a marine chronometer or a navigation clock on the bridge of a ship, the only thing that was important about the power reserve was to make sure that you topped it off and fully wound the mainspring every 24 hours. As a result, it was more important to know how long since the last full winding than how much longer the chronometer could run. That's why the chronometer power reserves and this one indicate zero when it's fully wound, as in zero hours since it was fully wound. When you get down to 24, you wind it again, if you're looking at a marine chronometer. The case is platinum, and from mid-2004 onward, F.P. Journe made most movements out of 18 karat rose gold. So what you're looking at is not gilded or plated. These are solid gold bridges and plates. That's one of the reasons this 38 millimeter platinum watch in the hand, it feels like a much bigger watch. It's massive. You can see the CS movement, the caliber 1304, has a number of features that make it aesthetically pleasing, but also quite accurate. Before we jump in, let me just shout out that this watch features the Maker's Marks of Eleanor, F.P. Jorn's original case maker from 1983 with his pocket watches all the way through mid-2008. It was outside of Paris. Eleanor is the reason why we have both Swiss and French hallmarks on this platinum case. In 2008, he bought the company, moved it to Geneva, that it became Boitier de Genève, his case factory. And a lot of the folks who used to work at the old Eleanor still commute across the border to work at Boitier de Genève. So that's why you have French hallmarks and 
a mysterious maker's mark on this Jorn case. And again, mid-2008 or thereabout, they discontinued these cases. So we have stripes across the bridges. We have a lovely solarization on the base plate adjacent to the two barrels. There's engine turning right underneath the escapement and the balance. You can see that all the screw heads have been mirror polished. We have set nation on the barrels and the ratchet wheels. And you can see one element of Jorn finish that's gotten better over time is the beveling. On the original watches from the brass movement era, some of the bevels were a little bit rustic, let's call them, with the milling marks from the tools still visible. Since then, Jorn has worked on bevels to make them look more mirrored. They're started mechanically still, but they're finished now with a handheld milling tool with a little buff on the end. Think a power drill with a piece of cotton to get this mirrored shine, which is quite pleasing. You can also see that we have satination on the wheels where you can see them and a polished escapement, but you can't actually see the transmission from the barrels to the escapement. This is the magic train. It's underneath the dial, so you have this big open gulf between the barrels and the escapement and the balance. Technically speaking, we have two barrels in series, which means you have a very flat torque curve. So from maximum wind to minimum wind, the watch keeps very consistent time. It doesn't gain a lot of time when fully wound, nor does it lose a ton of time when it gets down to its final hours. There's a free-sprung balance of enormous inertia, and so all the adjustments are done using the variable inertia masses on the balance. It's beaten away at 3 hertz. It doesn't need a high beat rate because it has a combination of high mass, precise adjustment via the free-sprung system, and six-position adjustment, which is exhausted, which is crown left, crown right, dial down, dial up, crown left, crown right, crown up, crown down. You're six. And so... With those six positions, you have an exhaustive adjustment. Believe it or not, it's usually crown up or crown down. Five position adjusted chronometers and high horology watches generally hide a lot of imprecision in that untested position. When you give the error no place to hide, you wind up with a very precise watch. So crown left, crown right, crown up, crown down, dial up, dial down. This is an exhaustively adjusted watch, which is why F.P. Jorn uses the name Chronomet on his Chronomet Souverain. Even though in Switzerland, by convention, Chronomet always means COSC certified, Time Lab certified, some independent authority. But Jorn says his watch is even more accurate, so he eschews their standards in favor of his own. For what it's worth, I've tested, and it's definitely true. Now, as you can see, it is a beautifully decorated movement and 30 meters water resistant, so do not test it against water, only chronoscopes. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.